Hey viewers, just wanted to say hi on this beautiful day. I just stepped outside my $10 million beachfront property and took these cute videos of seagulls. That was a lie. I mean, I do actually live in this house, but these are not your ordinary seabirds. This is the magnificent albatross, one of a kind master of flight. They don't look that amazing, you say condescendingly. They just look like some normal seagull with like some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, schnoz extension? Well, I reply, you're very, very wrong. Trust me, the albatross is incredible. It has surpassed the challenges of aerodynamics and biology to become the master of soaring. Firstly, some simple differences to prove my point even more. Taxonomically, albatross are much further from the other seabirds than first glance suggests. Albatross are divided into four genera, which are all part of a greater order of petrel birds, Procellaria forms. But outside the petrels, the closest other relatives to the albatross are penguins. So where exactly are seagulls in relation to albatrosses? Well, looking at a tree of all modern birds, here is the albatross, and all the way over here are the seagulls. So no, there really isn't a lot of relation between these two groups of birds, at least compared to a majority of the other birds out there. Also, another big difference is size. This footage doesn't do the best job, but some albatross are huge. This image does a better job illustrating the size contrast. Even the smallest albatross species, such as the Indian yellow-nosed albatross, are still pretty large, weighing 2.5 kilograms and having a wingspan measuring 2 meters across. This is comparable in size to the very largest gulls, like the great black-backed gull. Meanwhile, one of the largest albatross species is the wandering albatross, with some individuals weighing around 12 kilograms and possessing a wingspan of 3.5 meters, the longest wingspan of any living bird. So yeah, the common seabird and the albatross share as much in common as a biplane and an airbus, I think. Although maybe those two planes share a lot in common. I'm not a planeologist. The reason for this humongous wingspan is all about supporting the albatross's incredible lifestyle. The albatross ranges over the southern hemisphere and the North Pacific Ocean, which is, if you notice, an ocean load of water and not much else. Albatross, whose diet consists of fish and squid, must scan hundreds of square miles of water ceaselessly at a chance to find a vulnerable prey at the surface. This would seem like an incredibly exhausting effort for the bird. Imagine running a marathon every day just for a chance to get some fish sticks at the end of it. But for the ingenious albatross, these flights take as little energy as sitting in a car and driving. This is due to their mastery of a process called dynamic soaring. You see, the albatross's long, narrow wings are not built for flapping like a normal bird. In fact, they actually suck at flapping their wings, being incapable of sustained powered flight. How they really fly is much more like gliding, using the windy currents over the ocean surface as their greatest ally. Here's a good illustration of just how dynamic soaring works. If the wind is coming from this way, the albatross travels diagonally upwind. It then turns and diagonally travels downward, riding downwind to the ocean surface, until once more turning to travel upwind in an S-shaped pattern. In this way, the albatross's flight is effortless save for the turns at the top and bottom of the pattern, and can go for hours, flying hundreds of kilometers without ever once flapping its wings. As well, albatross can also use slope soaring, using the wind that rises off of large waves as another means of gliding. Other seabirds are found using these soaring techniques, however, none might be as effective as the albatross. Along with its humongous wingspan, another adaptation that makes the albatross such an effective soarer is a special tendon in its shoulder. This tendon, also found in the albatross's close relative, the giant petrels, acts as a shoulder lock that holds the wings fully extended without any exertion from the muscles, kind of like cruise control for the birds. With these adaptations, some albatrosses can fly nearly a thousand kilometers a day on the open oceans. That's the distance between Paris and Vienna, or between Chicago and DC. Now, this method of flight puts certain limitations on the bird. For one, calm winds equal no flying. If the winds an albatross is riding suddenly stop, then it will land in the water and just kind of sit there in the open ocean. 
It seems like a pretty routine thing, but I find it hard to imagine this is not one of the most terrifying situations a seabird can be in. I mean, if I was a bird completely defenseless, floating hundreds of kilometers away from any land, just waiting for the wind to come back, I'd have some dark thoughts, that's just what I'm saying. Moreover, the range of albatross species is affected by wind patterns. Notice that on a map of their range, they seem to completely avoid the equator. This is because of the intertropical convergence zone, aka the calms or doldrums, which is an area around the equator that experiences calm and mellow winds. This zone effectively stops different albatross species from living or crossing the equator, save for one Galapagos Island species that ride the unique current around the islands. As well, this is probably the reason there are no albatrosses in the North Atlantic. The only albatross there are stragglers who somehow got lost at sea and are forever trapped from finding their way home. The albatross life isn't just about flying. There are other aspects of its ecology to discuss. For instance, you might be wondering where an animal that spends all of its life above the ocean and only eats saltwater fish gets fresh drinking water. Well, it doesn't. An albatross will drink as much salt water as it wants, and then extra salt is excreted through salt glands. These glands lie above the eye and will secrete a hypersaline solution that travels out of the animal's nostrils onto the beak. Okay, whatever, but how about breeding? Kind of a weird question to ask out of the blue, but I'll answer it. Albatross will raise multiple generations of young throughout their lifetime, but these young take a long time to raise for bird standards with large species like the wandering albatross taking a year to do it, from laying the egg until a fledgling leaves the nest. As well, they only ever lay one egg at a time. All this to say that reproduction is a huge undertaking that albatross put a lot of effort into. In order to breed, mature albatross travel to nesting colonies, usually isolated islands free from predators. The colony an individual travels to is usually the very same one they were born at. Males will land first on these islands and set up a nest site, and if he's lucky, a female will show up and initiate what is known as a display bout. A display bout is kind of like the world's most high-pressure dance-off, where the pair will judge the other's moves to see if they are suitable for breeding and where everything is legal. An albatross has a litany of moves to pull from, including beak touching, mouth gaping, staring at the sky, head bobbing, yammering, yapping, and others that would get any human thrown off the dance floor. But if the other bird matches their tempo, then they might just mate. And not just that, but mate for life. And once they produce their one egg per cycle, both birds take turn incubating the egg for days to weeks at a time until it finally hatches more than two months after it's been laid. Once it's hatched, it will take many more months until the young albatross is ready to leave the nest. But if it does reach maturity, the parent's efforts will be well spent. A fledgling albatross will finally reach breeding maturity at five years of age, once more long for birds, and can live for decades after. In fact, the oldest wild bird in the world is an albatross named Wisdom, who is now in her 70s. Indeed, the albatross is one of the few birds that, just like us, will die naturally of old age. So that's albatrosses for you. Some of the most magnificent seabirds in the world, masters of flight and courtship, long-lived and well-traveled. As per usual, these beautiful beasts are being pushed to the brink by us humans. Fifteen species are threatened with extinction, one of the main drivers being commercial fishing, with many birds dying caught in the bait lines of a fishing boat and drowning. But in a world without humans, there is probably not a more peaceful life to choose than that of the mighty albatross. Hello, and thank you for watching. It's been a while, and I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I just love albatrosses that much. There's some facts I left out of this video. For instance, did you know the albatross has to do a run-up to get enough lift to take off? Kind of like an airliner? Anyways, thanks for the images, music, and videos I used to make this. And of course, thank you for watching. See ya.